What's going on everybody? It's Alex, <laughs> it's Alex and Alex here from Peanut Paintball. Uh, this is the end of day two of Paintball Extravaganza. Uh, as the, the video I just put up within the past, uh, well by the time you see this it'll be a while ago, but I put up a video a little earlier saying how awful the, the Wi-Fi in our hotel room is. It literally took five hours up to upload the 20 minute video I did last night. Um, so I do I do apologize for that. I can't do much about it. So um, you know we do what we do. Uh, we were hanging out with Di earlier tonight, and then we were hanging out having lunch, and we had some stuff to talk about here in the hotel room. Um, so they did delay the video that we were gonna do for uh, a little bit. Um, I think um, you had beers with Di, not me. You guys kind of left me in the. Well, corner. you didn't have beers with Di. The rest of us had. Yeah, beers they're with they're like four beers. And I'm like <laughs> one, two, three, four. Uh, one beer, please. <laughs> tell, tell me that on your fourth extravaganza. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we uh, we ended up, you know, we were hanging we were hanging out for a while, and then when we got back to the hotel room. You know, we had um, obviously some stuff to talk about, obviously because we're down here for a point. We're not down here um, just to randomly entertain people. As much as it sucks, because um, unfortunately this is the secondary topic to why I'm actually down here in the first place. Not that I don't like you. Not that I like myself, but you know, I don't like you. I'm just saying. But you know, whatever. Moving on. Anyway, I like uh, you. No, you don't. I hate you. Oh, okay. Good talk. Um, moving on. Anyway, so um, let's just uh, go ahead and talk about um, some of the stuff we saw today. Uh, right off the bat, um, we were both kind of booked up in some classes today. We were both pretty busy. Yeah. I ended up having to go to some classes I wasn't planning on going to, so that took up a couple, a uh, little bit of time. Uh, that I wasn't planning on. Um, I did find out that I'm not allowed to use my real DSLR camera unless I have a media pass, which is total BS, but... Did they take you right to the ground? Took it, <laughs> it was pretty close. They whipped out a baton and I was scared for my life. <laughs> um, so apparently that's not allowed to be a thing. So I had to use my cell phone and that's what you guys saw with like the LV one this morning and stuff like that. Um, so let's just go ahead and get right into it about what we saw today. Um, Let's just, there was a couple things with the clips, so let's just start out with the clips in general. Yeah. Um, the LV 1.1, obviously uh, I threw some pictures up earlier today, um, that's been all over PB Nation and all the Facebooks, you guys have Didn't all seen it. We talked about that yesterday. Um, we talked about it slight, no we didn't. We talked about the Shocker, the HK loader, the right. rotor, and the KP. Alright. Um, the LV 1.1, so uh, the LV 1.1, um, Visually very similar to the to regular LV1. Honestly, if you were 10 feet away, you would not even be able to tell the difference between the two guns. The only difference is the um, the, the rubber grip in the front. Uh, it's two pieces. Um, it's one piece instead of two. Well, it's two pieces on the LV1. Oh, all right. Yeah. It's two pieces on the LV1. Uh, on the LV1.1, they just formed it into one solid piece. Um, physically, it's not a different shape or anything. Instead of just two pieces, they just molded it into one. Yeah, people. Some people are complaining that they didn't like the feel of it those, twisting. Those yeah. those people are losers. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, uh, the only other big change is uh, the the LPR chamber uh, out in front. Um, they did make it uh, bigger, so it goes deeper into the body. Physically, it doesn't affect the shape of the gun by any means. Um, it's not wider, it's not longer, it just goes deeper into the gun. They shortened up the whole valve and the ram assembly. Yeah. Physically, you can't tell the actual difference. Performance-wise, they say it's going to be smoother, it's going to be quieter. Uh, a little more consistent. A little more consistent, um, honestly. I mean, we both went to Eclipse at different points during the day and got the spiel from you know, the sales reps and yeah. the, you know the company reps and stuff like that. So what was... When you went on your own separate occasion and they gave you the whole lowdown, what, what was your thoughts on it? What was your opinion by what that guy told you? Um, for the most part, the guy is like, it's pretty much the same gun, but they did change the front grip. And he said because people were complaining about that twisting action. Where I, I haven't really seen that. I haven't heard that would be an issue. I, I have an LV1 and I've never had that issue. Yeah. And then they uh, opened up the air chamber... Um, and that's strictly to um, increase the, um, yeah, I'm forgetting the words now, I don't drink too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, the shot-by-shot -shot consistency. Yep. Um, 
yes, just before I was a little bit inconsistent where I don't shoot nearly once. I didn't really run into that issue. I had never nothing I think noticed, nothing that anybody even told me or complained about. But I guess there was a inconsistency of shot to shot at higher rates of fire. Yep. So with that, that cured it. So okay. that pretty much what, that's what they pretty much said about the one point one. Okay. Um, basically, I guess um, what I what I took away from it when I went to when I went to Eclipse on my own time and I got the lowdown from, um, I don't know who you got the lowdown from, um, I got the whole roundabout talk from my personal sales rep. Yeah. Um, so she was maybe a little more uh, friendly or- um, A little more forward about it. You know, truthful or forward about it. Yeah. I maybe then just, um, you're not saying that you're nobody, but yeah. you know, you don't yeah, know- Yeah, the same spiel to the you don't, same You don't know person. any of the people that are working there at that booth, so you know, it was just a random spiel to, to them, a random person. Yeah. So I don't know if it was any more biased because it was myself or anybody like that. Um, for the most part, though, I got the I got basically the same speech. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't hear anything about uh, the grip. The grip was slippery up front. Yeah. Um, but it obviously, you know, it has a one piece grip and stuff like that. You know, people had asked for it and blah 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 blah. Yeah. Um, I honestly didn't see why. I don't agree with it. I don't think it's an issue. I don't think they should have done it. I don't really get why they did it. Yeah, it's. I think it comes out. I don't money. think it. I don't think it was worth them spending the money for it because they were already doing it. The dyes are already milled for it. Yeah. Um. It, it was already in the production line, and they were already casting it. I guess I don't know exactly how manufacturing processes work. So maybe in the long run, it was cheaper for them to change the dye. Yeah. So they had, well, they have four. You know, by color kit, it's got four pieces right now. It's got the front grip. Uh, the actual grips itself, and then the 3.1 and the LV1 top pieces. Right. So the, basically, the only different the only difference was in the top piece of the, you know, of the yeah. the front grip. So I don't know if it was cheaper for them in the long run to change the die so that they did one solid piece up front for the LV1. I because does that fit the 3.5? Do we even yeah, know? So, oh, it won't, so it won't I don't fit, think it won't fit three point five. So because I don't think either of us asked that question. If it fits the LV one, clearly it doesn't fit the three point five. Right, because then the original kit. Because then the original added. kit would have it would have just worked, and yeah. people would have said something about it. So obviously it doesn't fit the feet the three point five. Yeah. So they made it specifically for the LV one point one. So now they have a new die. They have a new piece. They have a new piece to manufacture. It's costing them more money. In my mind. I wonder if it fits the E-Tech five. I doubt it. I I, I highly doubt it. It just it just doesn't make sense for them to do that that way. Yeah. Um, I mean, Tech Five is a one piece, so right. Exactly. Yeah, I understand it's a one. I just I highly doubt the the way that Planet Eclipse functions that it fits one piece. But that that is something I I didn't I didn't think about the yeah. before, and that's great to bring up that yeah, it does it, it can't fit the three point five because it's you know it's one solid piece and it fits the LV one so. I don't know. Is that more cost effective for them? Are they now going to just put out because they can't? Because there's so many LV ones out there. They yeah. need to continue putting out the LV one slash GL three point five color kits. Yeah. Now they have to double their inventory for grip kits. No new grip kits are coming out. And there's gonna be no new grip kits coming out. <laughs> I don't know if people understand <laughs> what's going on. I know. Uh, so. so. I you know I didn't I don't know what the thought process behind that was I don't know whose decision that was maybe that was Leds maybe that was Jack you know who knows but yeah. to me you know in my head when I saw it and they specified it as an update slash improvement it's neither of those to me and it wasn't necessary to me yeah someone had to complain though no company is gonna really change something like that unless there's an issue with it to some extent. So there must have been an issue or complaints with it, and like the rep who was, who knows, maybe, something maybe he was saying people were maybe, complaining about it twisting. It, maybe there was an issue that Planet Eclipse found out that wasn't a big deal with consumers that uh, Jack or Jacko or Leds or somebody found out over there. Um, maybe it was even Nikki T before we left that figured something out that was an issue and that they were working on. You know, before we even found it out, and they were trying to fix it. You know, before anyone noticed it. Who knows? Um, but you know, the bigger LPR chamber, obviously, you're not going to physically notice it in the gun. Yeah. Um, does it shoot smoother? Does it shoot quieter? <clears throat> Planet Club says it does. Yeah. But nobody's shooting it yet. Nobody can know until it actually physically goes out. 
I'm not going to make any speculation because that's not what I do. I give you the cold hard fact. You guys know that through the history of my channel. I go through and I give you guys real time facts of what I'm told at the current time. I don't think anybody's going to notice the difference. I don't think anybody's going to notice the difference either, no. to be quite honest with no. you. You put I, it on absolutely. a machine and regulate and count everything, I think there'll be a difference. But an average person who try this guy and try that guy, which one do you think performs better? I don't think anybody's going to really notice it. I absolutely agree with you. I don't think the 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 average paintball player will, will notice the difference. Yeah. Um, yeah, exa exactly what you said. I think if you put it on... If you put a gauge, a big gauge on the tank and count, you know, the, the actual PSI and what temperature it is. Yeah, and, and chronographs, count each ball. Yeah, do, you know, do, uh, do a chronograph test and, you know, um, uh, an efficiency test and stuff like that. Yeah, you will see a difference in numbers. Yeah. You know, technically, you're probably statistically going to see a difference in numbers every single time you do the same thing with the exact same product with the exact same, you know, tank and hopper and gun. Yeah, because that's just how stuff works. Every time you fill up an air tank, it's going to be slightly different. Like you know, one psi or who the hell knows. Yeah. The batteries are going to be slightly drained, so maybe one time they don't react one millisecond as fast. You know, all that stuff. It's going to be you know, it's going to be that different every time. But I honestly don't think the average player is going to notice the difference. I absolutely agree with you there. Yeah. Um, so you know, the new LV one point one is going to come out at. 1395 and replace what the current LV1 price is. Yeah. Do you think that's viable? Do I do you, do you see people, you know, cuz obviously the the LV1 is going to drop in price at some point. Yeah. And going to be available for a lower price. Do you think that is that realistic? You know, would you uh, as a paintball, I think the way paintball players the yeah, brains do see, work, do you see I think they need the 1.1 1 .1 for no reason. Because it's new. Yeah. Like, I already seen people online, or this one guy in particular. It's like, already available for pre order on ANS, and I guarantee you they already have pre orders. <laughs> yeah, but they, this guy is saying, I need to sell my 3.5 because I need the new 1.1. Different platform guns. Different platform. They're not even comparing each other, but the guy's like, he needs, you know, he's a 3.5, it's old news. I gotta get rid of that because I need the new 1.1. Where, in general, he could probably just get. A regular LV1 and probably pocket 500 bucks if he wants to trade it, and the gun's gonna shoot basically the same. Yeah, that's I'm bad. thinking, but then yeah. again, no, I on, on that on that specific note, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. Like, I have a 3.5. I need to trade for the new LV1.1. Yeah. It's gonna be the exact damn thing. Yeah, you're gonna know that's the whole thing too. Like, you know, I you know I love Eclipse and everything. I current I'm currently shooting an LV1. And to me, it's like the LV 1.1. Obviously, you know, they went out and called it the LV 1.1. They did the same thing when they went back into GO 3.1. You know, they explicitly went out, you know, trying to tell people, like, yo, this is not a new gun. It's just yeah. the current gun with minimal updates. You know, we're trying to tell people that. And they're doing the same thing. They're calling it LV 1.1. It's got minimal updates yeah. and stuff like that. And like in four months from now, they're going to have the LV 1.5. But people... I'm gonna have to sit there and argue with people and say it's not a new gun. It's, it's just modified. Minimal, it's just slightly minimally updated. And, yeah. and honestly, as much as I love Eclipse and stuff like that, I wouldn't spend the thirteen ninety five. I'd rather just go spend the, whatever the drop price is gonna be yeah. on the current LV one because it's not that big of a difference. But definitely, if you want to buy a one point one, give us contact you and you can get them whatever <laughs> they want. Obviously. We're obviously not discouraging <laughs> you guys buying 1.1s. Obviously, it's Planet Eclipse and Zen LV1. It's going to be a fantastic gun. Yeah. And if you're going into the market and you want the best of the best of the best of the best, then you go with that's going to be a 15 But if you want just slightly no, you, below that, then you can go with the LV1.1. Or you can just go with the GO 3.5 or the LV1.1 because it's Planet Eclipse and it's the best of the best of the best. Oh. And you can go with either one and uh, shoot me a message here at AlexS at com, or you can shoot me a comment in the comment section below and I will totally hook you up with one. Oh, we're talking about best of the best. Right? Best of the best of the best of the sneak, best. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. Oh, put it back, put it back. What? Oh, oh. oh I'm sorry. We're not Stay supposed tuned. To, we're not supposed to show that? Stay tuned, folks, for <laughs> the OLED. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's wait and see how many comments we get until tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. Um, all right, so the, um, the shaft five barrel. Oh, the shaft five barrel. Yeah. Go ahead and knock it out. Um, pretty cool. 
you know the the milling on the front um like the the 1.1 is coming with the chef 5 it's just a standard back um just a new milling on the front yep um so i guess some players again were kind of complaining about the way paint was sticking to the front of the barrel, which it's, I can't it's, really understand. It's supposed, it. to, it's supposed to be better. It's supposed to be better milling on the outside of the barrel and better milling with the porting. Yeah. So that when you get barrel breaks and um, bunker rub or and bunker rub and stuff like that, when it builds up on the outside and the inside of your barrel, it doesn't stick to the outside and the inside of the barrel as much as it did previously. It drains faster and falls off the barrel and doesn't get stuck to the inside of the barrel, which is really um, the inside of the barrel, and it doesn't get stuck as much in the porting, which yeah. is really where it starts affecting your shot. Which means it's got to be thinner where it is. Right, exactly. Yeah, so that, that, that was their aim with the tip, and then um, the second half of that is uh, part of the new Chef 5 is um, going to be the new Chef 5 backs, which are... The upgrade Freak back. Which are Freak board, and they yeah. accept Freak inserts. It's a completely... It's made. It's a back made by Planet Eclipse. It's not a third-party thing. Uh, it's made by Planet Eclipse. It takes Freak inserts through the, the front of the insert, um, so you can't put it in through the back like, you know, old Freak backs and, you know, GOG backs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but it takes freak inserts, and it's already shaft four milled, so you don't need an adapter. Yeah. Uh, although the shaft five it does have an adapter. Kind of has an adapter. It's kind of built into the thing, but you don't need an extra adapter to connect to the shaft five tip and stuff like That'd that. That'd be crazy if there's two adapters. But I mean, did you did you notice how big that that back was? It needs a it technically needs a little adapter for the tip in the shaft five barrel that comes as part of it anyway. Yeah. But the shaft five back itself that except freak inserts is like what exactly as long as a freak insert. Yeah. So it's not like an extra two inches like a normal freak back is. It's not tiny. So right. you know that little half inch adapter that's automatically on the shaft five freak back anyway doesn't take yeah. up any more space. It's actually shorter than a standard shaft four barrel. Yeah. And just so people clear on um, the shaft five barrel doesn't automatically come with the freak. Mm -hmm. um, the other Alex, he's got some classes tomorrow, but um, yeah, so is there anything specific? Exactly? Yeah, definitely let us know down in the comment section, um, you know, if, if, if it's that serious, shoot me a message. Um, yeah. I'd rather you just uh, shoot it down in the comment section below, uh, send a message over on the uh, the YouTube, uh, not the YouTube page, the Facebook page, uh, www.facebook.com slash PI Paintball. Shoot us a message, leave me a post right there on the homepage, and I will do my best to help you out and get you whatever information I absolutely can. So uh, that's about it. That's going to wrap up our day two thoughts of Paintball Extravaganza 2015. Mr. Alex, thank you for joining me. Yeah, no problem. Mr. Alex in the background, thank you for chiming in on a random note. Thank you. All right, good talk. All right, and uh, <laughs> that's about it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed your PBX Day 2 video, and I will see you guys next time.